What's going on, YouTube? This is NecroStevo, and it is time for some live narrated Generation Showdown matches. Now, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, the Generation Showdown, of course, is a Wi-Fi competition being put on by Nintendo. The rules are pretty simple. It's a double battle format, and um, you can only have two of Pokemon on the special list. Register it in your battle box, and then, of course, um, Pokemon such that aren't title legendaries basically aren't allowed. Uh, in addition to things like Arceus and Deoxys, Shaman, Jirachi, Celebi, those types of Pokemon are not allowed. So, just to kind of go over my team uh, while we're waiting on this thing to check out my competition, I am going to be using an Assault Vest Eveltal. Um, this is actually a quiet natured Eveltal, running a bunch of HP, a uh, little bit of defense. Uh, I'm sorry, a little bit of special attack, and then split between both defenses so that I can take a lot of attacks from a lot of different Pokemon. Uh, since I do have a quiet nature, I'm going to be running uh, Foul Play, Sucker Punch, Dark Pulse, and Oblivion Wing, just so I can outspeed things with the Sucker Punch when I need to, uh, with Oblivion Wing for recovery. Starting off with 1500 points, of course, there we go, good stuff. That's going to be up shortly here, hopefully. And of course, I also have uh, my other Pokemon, my other special Pokemon is going to be Rayquaza, uh, of course Mega Rayquaza. Mine has a Lumberry going with Dragon Ascent, Dragon Claw, Extreme Speed, and Swords Dance. Uh, then of course we have my Trick Room Aromatis. Weakness Policy Aegislash running the Wide Guard alongside Flash Cannon, Shadow Ball, and King Shield. Just to help guard from some earthquakes and things like that. I have Heatran on Air Balloon with Fire Blast, HP Ice, Flash Cannon, and Protect. And a supporting Whimsicott with Bright Powder uh, running Moonblast, Helping Hand, Encore, and Safeguard. So let's go ahead and jump right into this first match um, with Chandelure, Mewtwo, Kyogre, Salamence, Chestnut, interesting, and Tyranitar. I think we're definitely going to see the Primal Kyogre here, which actually makes Evil Tall a nice answer. Primal Kyogre can't do much to Evil Tall. And if I wait to Mega Evolve with my Rayquaza, I can cancel out that rain, which will be pretty fun to do. Um, Let's see here. Eveltal actually answer, is a good answer for three of these Pokemon. Since he also has Tyranitar, I think Aegislash will be a nice Pokemon to bring as well. So let's just go ahead and bring Eveltal and Rayquaza up front with Aegislash. And Heatran is not going to have a good matchup here. So maybe just some support with Whimsicott will be the best idea. Especially since I can hit several of his Pokemon with Moonblast. Alright. So this will be the first match. I hope you guys are actually having a good weekend. I just got off work. I um, just took a shower. Uh, it's like almost 2 in the morning here. And this is my first match, so hopefully it'll let me do the full amount of matches. I didn't have any time this morning to do it. Or rather, I didn't make time to do it. But I wanted to actually record the matches the same way that I did for the Battle of Hoenn. So, that is that. Now we are going to see him starting off with Mewtwo and his um, Kyogre, which should go ahead and Primal Evolve here. And there it goes. Alrighty, so I expect to see the Mewtwo hit me with an Ice Beam, while the Primal Kyogre either uses Water Spot or Origin Pulse. Uh, there goes the Primordial Sea. So now I can Mega Evolve to cancel that out, and I'm not as afraid of Ice Beam, of course, with that. Um, and then my Evel talk can actually just go ahead and Dark Pulse the Mewtwo. There's no point in sucker punching it because if it uh, Mega Evolves into the um, Mega Mewtwo X, then it's not going to take as much damage anyway. And then I can hit it with Oblivion Wing on the next turn. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go ahead and Mega Evolve. And I don't want to go for Dragon Ascent this early. I actually think I want to. Hmm, I think I'm going to go ahead and Swords Dance first as I Mega Evolve. And I'm not super worried about anything right here. Thank goodness for mute buttons. Alrighty, so as I Mega Evolve my Rayquaza, I'm going to get that wonderful Delta Stream ability. We're going to get rid of his weather. Um, and of course, I won't be as weak to the Ice Beam from Mewtwo. It is Mewtwo X. Okay, so I should have gone for Oblivion Wing. That's okay, I'm happy I didn't go for Sucker Punch. Mewtwo X has uh, significantly better defense than Mewtwo Y. Uh, so I actually might see 
the uh, rock slide from that thing. But no, he does just go straight for the ice move. And I take that very well. Um, we're gonna go for Swords Dance here. Hopefully he doesn't go for Ice Beam with Kyogre. Otherwise I will regret this move, but we'll see. Origin Pulse, great. That's not going to do very much at all, if anything. So, especially to Eveltal. Um, wow, I managed to live it, hooray. All right, I'm happy I don't carry a Life Orb on my, um, on my Rayquaza, like so many people are want to do. So now we're just gonna go for the Oblivion Wing on the, well, hmm. Extreme speed should be enough to take out the Mewtwo from that range. Um, and I can't KO it with anything from, well now my Rayquaza should be the fastest thing on the field. So if that's the case, I can try We can try to Sucker Punch the KO the Mewtwo from that range. I don't think we're going to be able to, but we can try. Um, and then I can go ahead and use Dragon's Ascent to make sure that I take out the Kyogre right now. Because there's no point in. Or I could just hit them both with the Swords Dance Boosted Earthquake. That's not a bad idea either. Just to make sure I get damage. But we're just going to go for Dragon's Ascent on the Kyogre. Just to make sure. We're going to get that Sucker Punch off. I don't think it's going to KO. But it might. Oh, it actually does. Oh, I get a crit. Okay, so that crit probably mattered there. But I don't feel too bad for getting that crit, honestly, um, when you're up against a, a Mega Mewtwo X. Uh, and if he had lived it, he would have been able to KO my uh, my Rayquaza. But I don't know necessarily how useful that is, I guess. I don't know. So that's going to go down there. I still have my Lumberry intact in case he wants to have any weird shenanigans here. And I do get that wonderful plus two extreme speed, although if his Salamence has Intimidate, that's going to take that down a notch. And he also has Chandelure, interesting. So he does have Intimidate. I can't use Extreme Speed on the Chandelure, but I can Extreme Speed that Salamence. So that is definitely what we're gonna do. And we're just going to use Dark Pulse on the Chandelure. And we'll Extreme Speed. Or rather, I actually don't, actually, wow, that was a severe oversight there. I don't have Extreme Speed on this Pokemon. Wow, alrighty then, kinda dumb. That's okay though, because we can definitely go for a Dragon Claw on the Salamence. So, unless he's Scarfed, and he is not. Awesome. So that's going to be it for Salamence, and I get to hit the Chandelure with a uh, Dark Pulse. And I really, really like Eveltal. Um, much like Xerneas, people kind of underestimate its bulk. Uh, we can see just how little that Flamethrower did there. Even though he outsped me, it, it just didn't matter that he outsped me. Um, and I didn't invest much in his attacking stats because they're both so high to start with. So that first battle is going to be a very clean victory of 4-0. Might have been a 3-0 if he had uh, not gotten hit with the Sucker Punch there. With a critical hit, rather. So we do not need to save that battle video. And we're off to a good start. Alrighty, so let's just keep on going. I want to at least get five battles on this first video. We're gonna change the music because I can. I don't know why, you can't hear it. Uh, hopefully you like the groovy tunes that I decide to use. Groovy tunes, that sounds like a Nickelodeon like music spot or something. I don't know why, it's just groovy tunes. The musings of 2 a.m., ladies and gentlemen. So our next opponent is from Japan. Alrighty, let's see what he has. We have, wow, what a powerfully annoying team with Primal Grudon, uh, Mega Mawile, Mega Rayquaza, Cresselia, Crobat, and Thunderous. So we have some um, prankster shenanigans to be worried about. Cresselia is just really, really bulky. Um, I really like... Hmm, I like Aegislash for this matchup. For, especially for wide guard against the Groudon there. I don't, I don't like ground moves. My Eveltal actually is not going to be doing much against the Mawile. It can handle... It can handle the other Pokemon relatively easily, but I don't want I really want to bring it only for the Cresselia, really. So, if that's the case, let's see here. I do like Heatran, if only because Cresselia can't really touch it. And nor can Mawile, really. Hmm. So actually, I think I'm going to start off with Whimsicott and my Rayquaza. And then in the back, I have Eveltal in case he decides to bring his uh, 
chandel uh, I'm sorry, his Cresselia. Then I'll have my Eveltal and We're gonna go Aegislash for this one here. And we'll see if that pans out. I actually don't have a lot of experience using Whimsicott in doubles. I'm really interested in this Pokemon, if only for um, the uh, the VGC tiers that we have. So I kind of wanted to get a little bit of experience with it. But uh, yeah, Whimsicott is just so versatile. It, can, it just has so many supporting options and it still gets access to Stab, Moonblast, or Stab, Giga Dream, so. <clears throat> we are going to see Thunderous coming out here. He starts off with his own Rayquaza. A lot of people like to run uh, Jol uh, Adamant Rayquaza, so if he is Adamant, then I will outspeed him. Hopefully this Rayquaza has a really good speed stat. Um, and if nothing else, let's see. I might see a Taunt coming from the Thunderous onto my Whimsicott, and that would be annoying. But I should be faster than it to start with. So we're just gonna Mega Evolve, then go for a Dragon Claw on his Rayquaza. And then I am just going to... I guess I could just Helping Hand that. He could Protect though, which would be really annoying. Um, I expect to be faster because most Rayquaza are... He could be a Scarf Rayquaza though. This is really hard. This is a hard first turn. Um, I think I'm just going to... Helping hand that dragon claw. That's what I'm gonna do. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so my Rayquaza Mega Evolves first. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm faster. Uh, it should mean that I'm faster, but if for some reason he has the exact same speed as me, um, then that would be an issue, I guess. I don't know. So is he gonna Mega Evolve? He does Mega Evolve. So let's see who is faster. If I'm faster and he doesn't protect, he just lost his Mega Rayquaza, which would be, that would be a huge advantage early on. And hopefully he'll try to Thunder Wave um, my Rayquaza, and then my uh, Lumberry, of course, will kick in. Oh, he does protect his Rayquaza. Very good play on his part. He's using Taunt on my Whimsicott, I'm assuming. Yes, he is. Okay, that's okay, because I can definitely go for the Moon Blast to hit him uh, next turn. And we're still going to go for Dragon Claw on his Mega Rayquaza. Um, just because why not and I don't think he can really do much to me so I'm gonna stand with Whimsicott and go for a Moonblast on the Thunderous just to break a possible Sash or anything like that um, I, I guess he could go for the Hidden Power Ice it's not going to do much for him right now he could also switch out into Groudon just to, to negate the Delta Stream if he has Hidden Power Ice uh, we might also see Thunderous going for priority Thunder Wave to slow something down but I am able to get off the Dragon Claw, which is great. And it is able to KO it. Awesome. Oh no, it barely doesn't KO. Wow, I thought I had the KO. And he does KO me. Oh man, that is not, not a good turn at all. I should have doubled into it. That sucks. But he is Life Orbed, so we both go down. Oh man, I would have really liked to KO him without losing my Mega Rayquaza. Um, so no more Air Current. I'm just going to Moonblast the Thunderous here just to get off some damage on it. It's probably not going to do very much. Might get the special attack drop. He goes for Dark Pulse. I'm not sure why. Um, I guess it... I don't know why I went for Dark Pulse. Yeah, I'm not really... I don't understand that play. But that's okay. Um, even though I'm taunted. And that's why I make sure I always carry an attacking move. Even on my supporting Pokemon. That way when I get taunted, I'm not taunt bait. Because then you just struggle to death. I'm expecting him to have Groudon in the back. Um... I'm actually going to go ahead and go into Aegislash now. Uh, which I am wary of the taunt coming from the... Uh, yeah, there's the Groudon. So I'm very wary of the taunt coming from uh, Thunderous again. And of course, Groudon can use spread moves. So, uh, hmm, I'm in a little bit of a tough spot here. Because if I switch out... Actually, a switch out here is really useful, actually. So we're going to go ahead and switch out Aegislash Slash into Evil Talk, expecting that ground move. And then I can just Moonblast the Thunderous again while I'm waiting on that taunt to wear off. So we're going to Moonblast the Thunderous. We're going to switch out Aegislash, Slash, expecting him to taunt my Aegislash, Slash, which would be annoying because I can't use Wide Guard. Um, and of course, the uh, 
Okay, so he does try to taunt, which is perfect. That's what I thought he'd do. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna get a little bit more damage off on his Thunderous, which is fantastic. And he's in range for one more, and he goes for the Fire Punch. Fortunately, I have the Bright Powder on Whimsicott. Not going to be an issue right there. I'm definitely okay with that. And so at this range, um, we're gonna go for Foul Play on his Grudon. And my Whimsicott is just going to KO that Thunderous there. Foul Play is going to do a lot of damage to his Grudon uh, just because he has such a high attack stat. I'm able to take out the Thunderous finally. And, um, oh, I'm faster. Wow, he has a really slow Grudon because I have a minus speed nature. Yes, that's a two hit KO. Fantastic. And Whimsicott has done exactly what I needed it to do, uh, which was. Just support generally, and it even KO'd the Thunderous, which is just great. And I really like that I can 2-hit KO this uh, Grudon, because now I can go back out into Aegislash. And if he hits me with a ground or a um, fire type attack, my weakness policy will kick in. And of course, I can protect from any weird rock spread rooms with my um, white guard ability. So this is, this is a fantastic position, because he brought in Cresselia next, so. One more foul play over there. And then we're just gonna go for the Shadow Ball. Or rather, yeah, we're just gonna go for the Shadow Ball on the Cresselia. So he's gonna protect with his Grudon, which I'm completely okay with. I'm gonna go for the Foul Play that doesn't work out. Stance change here. I don't think there's anything Cresselia is gonna go for that I'm worried about with Aegislash, so. Definitely okay with that. Um, Dad did a lot of damage. Good job, you just slash. He went for the Trick Room. I'm okay with that because I am running slow Pokemon. So, by all means, go for Trick Room. <laughs> um, Evil Tall's Taunt wears off, which is fine. It wasn't really using it in the first place. So, one more foul play on the Grudon, and we're gonna go for King Shield just to be completely safe here. There's no reason to risk it. Not there. There are no biscuits involved in which to risk things for. Uh, I guess he could go for, uh, he, he probably won't have Icy Wind because he's running Trick Room. The Psychic move I'm not worried about, the Electric move I'm not worried about. I'm not really sure what he can do here. I guess he can use a Rock type move on my Eveltal, but even that won't KO me. So um, it's, it's specifically Eevee to survive the Stone Edge from an Adamant Max attack, uh, Primal Grudon. So I'm in a fantastic position, I'd say. I basically just need to live this turn and then I can KO the Cresselia next turn, is what it comes down to. So he does go for Helping Hand, that is a problem. So we're gonna get the King Shield back up here. The Stone Edge, if it hits me here, might be a problem uh, with the Helping Hand. I don't have that calc in mind. He just goes for Fire Punch, that's gonna hurt. Still not able to KO though, even with the Helping Hand boost in the sun. And I am able to finish him off, so this battle is all but sealed up, because now I can just hit the Cresselia with the Sucker Punch if it tries to attack, um, and then I can just go for a Shadow Ball. So, Sucker Punch there, and Shadow Ball here. Fantastic. So this battle should be over, um, especially if he tries to attack. He really should. I, I don't know what he could do that, to help himself here. Um... Yeah, this should be over. There we go, he forfeits. So thank you for forfeiting and not just disconnecting. Such a, just an unsportsman way to, unsportsmanlike, excuse me, way to end the battle. But that is two victories under my belt. Wahoo, as Mario might say. So we're gonna keep on trucking here. Yes, I would like to continue battling. And that actually worked out really, really well. I have not not had a lot of experience with Whimsicott but the Bright Powder actually helped out. I would say if he had hit that Fire Punch, um, I don't know, well, he would've still had Thunderous, so I don't know how much that would've ended up mattering, um, just because I could Sucker Punch through Thunderous at any point. So this person actually is not running any of the Pokemon on the special list. He has Gengar, Furfru, Azumarill, Raichu, Hydreigon, and Dragalge. Might have Mega Gengar, that could be a little annoying. Um, but yeah, so, hmm. Alrighty, well, let's see. My camera's getting low on battery, too, so I might have to call it after this battle. But that's okay, though. Uh, for this battle, definitely gonna go ahead and start off with my Mega Rayquaza 
and my um, Eveltal, just because that has a really good matchup against all of his Pokemon, except for the Azumarill. And even the Azumarill can't do much against the Dragon as a Sint. So we're going to do that again. Uh, Rayquaza, Eveltal. Um, and to deal with any possible annoying shenanigans from the Furfru or anything like that, I think, hmm, I think Aegislash is going to be good here, especially because he gives me a steel move. And also, let's see, Heatran resists Dragon, Dragon, Poison, Normal. Um, hmm. You know, let's go ahead and bring Heatran. Um, that is to steal. But he has a lot of dragon type moves that he's going to be throwing around otherwise, so. Well, I might as well. Although, I, I really don't see how his team is going to get past Mega Rayquaza Eveltal. But we'll see. It'll just be interesting, I think. Hopefully, this battle will wrap up before my camera dies. If not, uh, I don't know. I, maybe I'll post-narrate it later on. We'll see. So, we get to start off here. He's probably... That might be a Scarf uh, High Dragon. Which could be a little bit annoying. I don't think Dragalge Scarf, it's too slow to really be bothered with that. So maybe a Specs Dragalge. Um, we're just gonna Mega Evolve. Or actually, I might just switch right out here into Heatran, since Heatran resists almost everything that these two might wanna go for. So let's just switch on into Heatran, play it safe. And we'll have Eveltal go for the Dark Pulse on the um no we'll go for the oblivion wing on the high dragon because that's honestly a bigger threat right now because dragology is a little bit slow so we're gonna go ahead and go for that and um i expect him to probably target down my rayquaza right now with dragon moves uh he could also use poison type moves expecting me to switch on the whimsicott maybe expecting the dragon moves so he try makes that a pretty safe switch uh, he doesn't really have anything for Eveltal. So, um, but yeah, I get the switch off here. Heatran comes in. Nice shiny Heatran that I got, the GTS. I just kept trading for Heatran, for Heatran, for Heatran, and I got this one. So, he does go for Draco Meteor, and that is not surprising at all. That's going to pop my balloon, but I should live it pretty comfortably. Yes, I do. And he also goes for, let's wait for it. Um, oh, wow, my minus speed Eveltal is faster than Dragology. That's kind of entertaining. Um, I would have actually liked him to go first in case he targets my Eveltal. But he goes for Draco Meteor as well, so that's a little annoying. Double Draco Meteor, but he's about to find out just how bulky I am. As I take that really, really well for him being probably adaptability and specs, uh, I took that very, very well. And so now since both of them are at minus two, I'm expecting one of them to switch out, honestly. Um, I think Flash Cannon has base, um, 80, so that'll be 120 with Stab, or Hidden Power is also 120. Flash Cannon had better coverage on his team, though, I'm pretty sure, except for Raichu. So we're just gonna go for Flash Cannon on the, um, Dragalge, and we're gonna go for another Oblivion Wing on the high Drygon, uh, just to get some of the HP back. So he's gonna switch out to save the Dragalge, which I'm okay with. I did expect something to switch, I just didn't know what necessarily. Gengar comes in, I'm happy I went for Flash Cannon and not for, so he goes for Focus Blast. Minus two special attack, he's not quite able to nab that KO, and I'm gonna really hurt this Gengar right here, which is really, really nice. Um, I almost KO it, and I'm gonna get back a lot of HP with my Oblivion Wing as well, so this is gonna be Pretty nice. Um, hmm. So we know that he's not Scarf, which is nice, because that means I can come back in with Rayquaza to threaten him if I need to. Uh, I'm expecting that Gengar to Mega Evolve right now. What we're gonna do is go... What is he gonna go for? I'm gonna go out into Aegislash right now, hoping that he's gonna go for a Dark Pulse or something like that to finish off my uh, Heatran. And at the same time, I'm just going to Sucker Punch to hit the Gengar. And that's what this is going to happen right now. So hopefully he doesn't substitute up or something like that. That would be annoying. Uh, 
Another play would have been expecting the substitute to just go for a Dark Pulse. I was also considering putting Snarl on my um, Eveltal just so I had that nice spread damage. But at the same time, it's like, it's so weak that I didn't really want to bother with it. So, but yeah, let's see what he goes for here. Is he going to take the Sucker Punch? Oh, it failed. He definitely subbed up. Oh, he went for Destiny Bond. Interesting. Well, we're just going to leave him alone. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, of course... If Destiny Bond is used, until another move is used, the effect of Destiny Bond stays in play. So that means he still has access to me um, being taken down by his move uh, if he uses it again. So now um, we're just going to King Shield this turn as I hopefully am just able to take out the uh, Hydreigon with a Sucker Punch. Um, hopefully he just leaves it in. And I think he's just going to keep on Destiny Bonding over there, which is fine. I'm going to wait until... Uh, he has fewer Pokemon before I bother KOing myself. I'm really surprised that he didn't um, go for another move. I don't know. So I'm able to take out the Hydreigon. He still has a full HP Dragalge in the back, of course. Um, he's going for Destiny Bond again. That's what I figured he'd do. And I don't want to. I just don't want to lose a Pokemon. So why would I bother with that? Um, I do hope this battle doesn't drag out though, because my camera only has a little bit of juice left in it. That's why I really need that capture device. Uh, I just, I just really need that thing. So he's probably going to go back out into Dragalge here. I don't... Actually, he's probably going to go on and do whatever he has left. Maybe Raichu, just to hit Eveltal. Maybe. I can see that. Uh, he also might have Azumarill, just because I have the Mega Rayquaza. Let's see. I, I'm interested to see what his last Pokemon was. Furfru means he's basically lost right here, because Furfru can't do much at all to Aegislash. Slash. Although he could be annoying if he has Cotton Guard, but I still have Special Blooms, so we'll see. And he actually is going to go back out into the Dragalge, which is interesting. Okay, well I'm, I'm okay with that. I am not attacking the Gengar, so um, I don't think I'm worried about any spread moves here. I'm just going to go for a Wide Guard in case he wants to try Dazzling Gleam, or uh, he could also use Surf. I don't know. I'm not really sure what to expect there. And we're just going to go for the Oblivion Wing to make sure I keep on gaining my HP back with Eveltal. So. Um, I'm expecting him to just to attack. He knows I'm not going to King Shield again. But he also knows that I know that his Gengar isn't really a threat of any sort since he just keeps on Destiny Bonding. It's not even a Mega Gengar. So I'm not really sure what he's going to do. He could attack, but then hopefully he'll activate my Weakness Policy if he does attack. And I can really hit him hard. Uh, afterwards, so. Oh, it is a Mega Gengar. Alrighty, so he's gonna Mega Evolve here. And now he's grounded, which is nice, because now he's in range for my uh, Rayquaza to hit him. I'm just gonna Wide Guard. Maybe he'll go for a Dazzling Gleam. And Shadow Ball right away. Alrighty, then that's fine. It's not gonna KO. My Weakness Policy gets activated. That's fine. It really depends on what the Dragalge is gonna do here. Okay, and I'm going to get back what little HP I'm missing. That did not do very much at all. He's just going to hit me with a Specs attack here. But what attack is he going to use? Scald, okay. Okay, he's going for the Burn tech. Okay, that didn't do very much at all. So now we're just going to... Um, We're going to Flash Cannon the Dragalge, and we're going to try to Sucker Punch the Gengar again. That way, if he... I'm basically him forcing, forcing him to Destiny Bond. Okay, he did not Destiny Bond, so he just lost his Mega Gengar. Awesome. And I don't know if he's faster than me uh, with his Dragalge. He is, so he's just going to go for another Scald on my Evil Tall again. Did he burn? Did he burn? Did he burn? He did not, so... I'm going to severely hurt his Dragalge right here. Good old plus two stab flash cannon. Explosion. And it KOs. Fantastic. I get a crit. Don't think that it matters because this battle is basically over at this point. We have to see what his last Pokemon is. Please don't disconnect because I don't really uh, puff up my Jigglies if you disconnect. Um, his last is a Zoom roll. Alrighty then. So we're just going to King Shield because that's a safe play. And we're also going to... Uh, Oblivion Wing with my Eveltal. Because I don't expect it. He needs to be banded in order to take me out. So, 
Uh, I am assuming he's just going to play rough the Veltal, but in case he wants to attack with the water move, he goes for Aqua Jet, and I do protect myself. He's going to get the minus two, and that basically seals it up. I'm not sure why you would Aqua Jet when you know you're you're faster. Um, I actually did pretty good damage. Good job, Eveltal. And so I didn't even end up needing uh, Mega Rayquaza during this match, which I'm definitely okay with. And at minus two, he's not even going to be able to take um, my Aegis Slash out from that range at all. So then we just get to double up. And uh, he's probably just going to go for a Waterfall this time. He might also play rough. But he can't KO me with the player off from that range, so. Because I'm at very full HP. There's a Citrus Berry. I don't think the Citrus Berry will save him from a plus two Flash Cannon. Uh, oh, I'm faster. Wow, he is a really slow Azumarill. Interesting that I'm that much more fast than him. Alrighty, so the first three battles were great. I have three wins right now. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video after this match here. Make sure he doesn't disconnect. And alrighty, he didn't disconnect. Fantastic. So it is interesting that he didn't bring any uber Pokemon to the match. Because you have to assume your opponents are going to be doing so. So why would you not bring any ubers? Uh, but I don't need to save that. Wait for that rating to get uploaded there. And that'll be it for right now. So guys, hope you enjoyed part one of this video. Look for the rest up soon. And I will talk to you later. Bye bye.